Greetings everybody and welcome to episode 150 of The Glow. My name is Brian Pierre Grossi, author of The Big Glow, The Wow, The Now, Life Coach, Retreat Facilitator, Blogger, Blogger, Podcaster, Human Being here in the moment with you right now and it's so good, so good to be with you from the state of Wisconsin today as we make a road trip to the east slowly but surely really enjoyed being in Madison Wisconsin which I posted about last night a place I've heard a lot of good things about a town I've heard a lot of good things about for uh, a long time and it's great to be through there and um, welcome Jessica welcome Robin welcome Annie when you're entering please share where you're from how's life what's happening this is a collaborative co-creative affair this is um, all about community. We've had some great uh, guests joining us, really fun episodes and conversations to this point. I have Corey Katuna joining me today. I'm really excited about having on, and as soon as she hops on, we will have her get on and say hello. She's in Peru. She's in Peru. Welcome, Marie. Marie's doing a retreat with us in Sweden uh, in a couple weeks, June 16th, the weekend of June 16th. Our first time we'll be in Stockholm, so looking forward to that. Robin is in Asheville, North Carolina. Corey is here. Welcome, Corey. Robin's in my home, my home heart, Asheville, North Carolina. Great to see you, Robin. So, um, yeah, excited to have Corey on. Corey's in Peru today. She was leading a adventure that she will tell us about and uh, inform us on. And we're going to discuss the power of vulnerability and see where things go from there. As always, this is always live, spontaneous, authentic communion and communication. So. Um, uh, discussing the power of vulnerability and seeing what arises. Let's see if we can bring Corey on. Successful. Hi, Corey. Hey. Hey. Do you, Welcome. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Mm -hmm. Do you, how do you? How do I sound? Is it the sound is good? It seems like we're synchronized with our. The voices yeah it does nice so everything seems fantastic we were we were having a little test run before and there was a little delay in our communication as we navigate the cafes of peru yeah with wisconsin but um it seems to be working out well yes indeed so um i asked you i asked you before we got on i said how are you feeling and you gave me such a such a wonderful answer. You said plain. <laughs> it's so true. It's, it's like uh, it's, it's like it's like there's talking about vulnerability and talking about authenticity and then like living it, you know? And like what is it That's really? So sick. Just I was thinking, what is what is it really? It's just being in the moment, noticing what's happening and living, communicating and acting from that place right and really that's the power of it it's, it's it's not like i think when people think about vulnerability they think like oh i i should cry more or something yeah sure it could be that but it's so much more than that it's like living from this place of like deep authenticity and truth inside yourself in the moment and and what i noticed with you is like and why i so resonate with what you're sharing like i remember your first video right and you're like I don't really know what I'm doing, but I just felt like I wanted to make a video and I wanted to like say something. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Right. And it's like every step that you take, it's like you're bringing people along with you of like, I feel whatever. I feel whatever I feel, but and, and I'm communicating what I feel and I'm taking action and moving forward in this space. And I'm like sharing my my journey with you 
right? I'm sharing my journey with you. That's what I see you doing. Is like you're 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 like almost like documenting, you know, this journey that you're taking. So like, what have you learned in this journey? What are you discovering? What's 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 been happening for you? What lessons are unfolding? Oh, that's so cool. I just love how like <clears throat> you have to excuse my little my little cold. Um, I love how. Ugh, you just make it so much easier to be authentic. Like not all environments make it just like call you to be the realist in each moment. So it's a lot of environments. It's mm -hmm. way harder to just say the truth about how you're mm -hmm. feeling or especially if people are counting on you. Even, I mean, even in this situation, I yeah. woke up and I was like, oh, like, I should be like lit up. Like I need to be in a good state for this podcast. Like I want to just be, yeah. you know, high impact, high volume, like high energy. And I just woke up and I wasn't. And what was so cool was just like getting on the call with you. Like I had it like cross my mind to be like, just say that you're great when you asked me how I was. But I was like, <laughs> damn it. Like, that's not true. Like, that's not like, I kind of can't get away with that around you. So I love that. I love that environment. Um, yeah. Well, let's explore, so let's explore that noticed... even deeper because, sorry, there's a little bit of like a delay. She's froze. So while you're froze, I just want to say that what I find so amazing is like this word plain. Like I feel plain. It doesn't have a sense of like good or bad. It doesn't, there's not actually not a judgment around it. Like it's not like this is good, this is bad, this is happy this is sad it's like sense of being um it's a sense of recognizing something without having a sense of a label around it so Corey's coming back i believe read some of the comments as well robin says awesome Corey. we love that you say how you are truly feeling exactly so i find when you get into this deeper sense of in the moment, it allows things to move, to navigate in a different way and allows things to operate in a different way. We wonder why things aren't coming back in the way that we want or the way that we would like. And when you start to, it's, it's a sense of, you discover that you're not being authentic, which is why things are coming back the way you want. Welcome back, Corey. Thank you. I think my wife, I might be a little talking, hectic as you were. I was talking about, um, it's interesting when you say like plain, like plain actually doesn't have a judgment around it of like, this is good or this is bad. It's just what's here. And that's like a really interesting thing to look at too. Cause we, we can easily think, well, this is bad. This is good. This should be that. This shouldn't be that. This is just what's happening. Maybe plain is like amazing. Maybe plain is like magical. Maybe plain is like a wonderful area to explore, you know? Totally. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I think the biggest lesson that I have been learning about this and I, and influenced a lot by you, I mean, you've really been an influence for authenticity for me recently, um, has been around insecurity. Like really the only reason that I would resist feeling negative or re resist at least showing that I feel negative or or plain or neutral or anything would just be because it looks bad. You know, it's just like that social insecurity. It's just not looking good to other people. That's really all it ever comes down to. Um, and kind of the realization I had was that um, you get more from insecurity, like more growth happens in insecurity. It's like the security that is the, the that's the, scary thing like that's the thing that so many you see this so much in the states um people just like working their asses off to get really comfortable and really secure so that they can, they can know exactly what is going to happen with their money they know exactly what's going to happen with their family they know what they're eating that night they know where they're sleeping like so much security that they become totally depressed and complacent and you know don't live the life they're here to live they don't fulfill their calling they don't <clears throat> they don't serve so I, yeah, just to like change the sort of root issue in my mind of like insecurity is what I want more of 
not less of. Like, I actually want to be more socially insecure. I want to seek more, uh, like, not knowing and, and confusion and, secu- and insecurity and, like, being, like, not looking good to people. <clears throat> that's really what has freed up honesty. Like, that's freed up more, like, all right, I'm just going to say it exactly as it is, as, regardless of how hard it is, because I want more of this, not less of this. And the reason is that you feel like you're growing more, you're learning more, you're evolving more through embracing this insecurity. Say that again. The reason, what's the reason oh. why you want to delve deeper into insecurity? <sighs> yeah, it's just like that's where the learning is. I've just done too much security. Like I've just mastered the security thing. Like I did great at that for years. Just full-time corporate job, good money, good, like, long-term, really committed relationship. There's everything so, like, guaranteed around me. And, yeah, like, once you have it, like, this, ha- this is so textbook, but it's, like, once people, like, reach their, you know, become a millionaire, become a, buy their house, or, like, get that job, and then they're just, like, this is it? This is what I was just busting my ass for? Like, wait, I, it does, like, this is the most textbook thing ever. It's, like, you don't, it's... Like, now what? Like, I still not fulfilled that thing that I was trying to fulfill. Like, security mm-hmm. doesn't... Yeah, so, I mean, the reason is because I feel like I've mastered the, the security end of the thing. I've figured out how to, like, get everything to work around me, and it's just not it. So I want mm-hmm. to learn. Like, I want to grow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I want to read... Um, I don't normally do this, as I was telling you, but I want to read just the beginning of your your website here because people are like who is this person like i think that like again like that's part of security like we want to put ourselves in this label or put ourselves in this category or one of the things i always when i'm reading about like podcasting or about anything really in wealth professional fields like establish yourself as an authority you know it's like a thing they always like talk about but it's like it's so when you when it's so fake and it's so obviously what everyone is doing and you're so obviously following a formula it's kind of like what's the point you know so anyway that's cool i like how you started your, i like how you started your, your website you said i started this blog to share the best things i learn about empathy confidence enlightenment and reaching your potential the first post I wrote was called Just Fucking Stop. I'm glad I did. Since I've written about all kinds of things like jealousy as a catalyst, finding fuck yes and saying no to everything else, how to get company culture right, my love life, a new perspective about the election, applying minimalism to your social life, why getting offended doesn't work, celibacy and all kinds of other stuff so i'm reading that and i'm like gosh we could have like a five-hour podcast about all these amazing things you've like delved into and you're just like kind of like sort of like would you say you're using your i mean you're using yourself kind of like as like a guinea pig to explore things but at the same time it's coming from an authentic place like this is generally what i want to try this is generally what i want to explore i want to experience egypt i want to experience peru I want to experience celibacy. I want to experience minimalism. I want to experience whatever I want to experience, right? And there's there's, there's a growing edge for you. So there's like a dedication, a devotion to growth and evolution and learning and like going wherever it takes you, right? Totally. You totally nailed it. It's that like, it's like I am the experiment. And like, and and actually like, I feel like I can't be of service unless like like I can't do the thing where I'm the teacher and I already know and I'm just telling everybody like here's the here's the facts here's what you need because I already have mm-hmm. it I just like every like I just can't do that that just I it's like an instant block on that it's not real like what I can do that helps people is just like go through it myself and then tell them what I just did or be like come with me and let's do this together and let's figure this out together like that's where the growth around me happens like that's where just where I see it and actually Gary Vaynerchuk was like a huge influence on this because he was like I watched one of his videos and he's just this like hardcore like business guru type guy but he was like okay all you like 25 26 year olds are out there trying to be like the next master like you guys are trying to be like authorities on topics like like you know business coaching and all this and he's like you guys 
that's not the value that you add. There's already people that are way more advanced than you in that. Like, that's not your value. Your value is showing people how you get there. Like, showing people the process, being persistent, being patient, like, bringing people up with you. Like, that's the value that you can add, is starting from where you are and teaching people how you get there as you get there, not, not doing it in retrospect like all these like all these current business gurus are doing. And that was so genius to me. It's like, nice. Like, I don't have to wait till I add value. Like, I don't have to wait till I'm like of service to people. I can do it just by like trying all kinds of stuff and talking about what works and what doesn't. Welcome to Tiger Singleton, our guest from last week. Hi, Tiger. Watching in uh, Portugal, I believe. Robin says, to always be open to learning something new makes me feel so much better. Um, yeah, anytime you want to, anybody wants to ask questions or comments, feel free to jump in. This is a co-creative community affair. And um, I want to say, like, about what you're sharing, to me it feels so much more alive it's like it's like it's like this it's like this podcast is this because it's it is totally live like anything can happen right so what you're doing to me feels like so much more alive it's, it's more of a draw there's more of a magnetism towards it as opposed to like yeah you know 10 years ago i studied this in a book and like let me tell you what i learned so you can like know it too it's like you're actually like in it like no, I'm, I'm like reporting from the field you know it's like being in like a it's like it's like a war reporter like i'm down here and i'm like telling you what's happening not i'm writing a book about what i think you might be doing, you know? <laughs> so to me, there's like a whole other level of like aliveness that's really captivating and you know we've talked about creating something together in the future which i'm really excited about and um, one of the things for me is i've been taking people on kind of like three days, four days, five days, occasionally like seven days, but like a deeper immersion. Like we're talking like a minimum of like 14 days, you know, and somewhere like really different uh, cultural experience. And I think it just, my sense is it just, you're going to discover things that you, you just can't discover by thinking about like <laughs> what you're going to discover. Like, you know what I mean? You can't think nice. into it. You have to really dive in an experiential way, yes. which is what you're doing, right? And that's what's happening for you. I love that. And like what I feel like I'm sort of lacking on these trips that I'm leading is this sort of, um, yeah, this like this more just what you have is like this confidence as a, as a leader, as just like being able to sort of see what's going on and kind of connect it and be like, here, there, like here, this might be useful for you. Or do you see, why don't you try this? Like I, what I feel like is like, no, straight up, I'm in this. Like I'm confused. Like I'm like, I'm getting lost. I need I need some guidance too. Like I'm in this too with these people that I'm leading these trips with, which is just like an interesting mm -hmm. model. It's like there's I really see no like guidance on how to do this. So the idea of like teaming up with you to do this kind of a this just feels like yeah, this would be so it would be such a synergy. Yeah, it feels like a perfect team and I envision Annie with us too and like whoever else and just having this like, this like this, this thing that's like, you know, we're just diving in and committed together and seeing what we discover and bringing context to what unfolds each day. Um, so I'm definitely excited about it. It feels like a really, a really powerful, yeah, magical, also at times challenging, but the challenge is where like the greatest growth happens, right? Cool, yes, definitely. Yeah. So um, a couple other quotes that stood out to me from your your blog about Egypt. Cool. So you're, you're like, you went on this. Well, first tell people about your Egypt. Like what drew you there? And like what it was like for you? And yeah, tell us about that whole experience. What, yeah, what motivated you to go? Totally. totally. Um, there's like a little lag, I think, so. All right, I think no it's okay. Um, yeah, okay. So the first, like, the first thing that motivated any of this traveling was I just posted. I made a post on Instagram, and I said that um, I go to a lot of retreats and I do a lot of traveling, and those two things are really separate. Um, and retreats feel like I'm going to these cool places, but I'm not experiencing the people there. I'm not going out. I'm not. I'm not taking advantage of where we're going. 
I'm not traveling. I'm just going to like a like resort and doing a retreat. And then when I'm traveling, a lot of the times it's just like to travel on like try the food and go to the places and like I'm not I'm not it's not intentional. It's not like dedicated to development or growth. And so there's just I like, kind of imagine this like synergy of the two. Um there's I just think that it could both could be better. And I posted that and got this like flood of interest just like everybody is like same 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 traveling is underwhelming retreats are could be better um and from that yeah i got a ton of people just reaching out like let's collaborate on a trip here let's make this one why don't you come to my place here and um one woman georgina um we just have a really cool special like bond kind of like you and me do and she was like let's do one in greece and so we started planning this and then all of a sudden she's like actually i know someone in egypt let's do it in egypt and it was it just unfolded really it was like it was really effortless so yeah it feels like there was just just getting out of the way of it happening not there was not a lot of effort it was just like okay that resonates that resonates i'll write this post you do this we and just really happened so um the intention for the for the Egypt trip or like what it was it was a two week trip um seven of the days were going to be on camels in the desert camping just like out there totally outside of almost everyone's comfort zone um and then the days surrounding it were going to be in this town Dahab which is like a free diving town so um so our intention for it just because neither of us knew what we were doing, it was totally experimental, was that people who wanted to come would expect nothing. Like, that was the criteria. Like, if this resonates with you, like, this is... Basically, if it doesn't resonate to expect nothing for a trip, to, like, pay thousands of dollars on a trip and expect nothing, then don't come. <laughs> um, but if that really resonates, and, like, you're down to just, like like jump into the water and like see where like just go for it really just to like and surprisingly we got like 15 20 people applied or like reached out and were like i'm in i want to come so it ended up being nine nine of us total that so our max was 10 but we got nine people that came and um yeah i don't i mean it was just there's no real way to like exactly like you said we could not have anticipated anything that happened like it was just uh yeah it was totally transformational for everybody in a different way like one woman spent the, almost the entire time silent kind of on her own accord having her own processing yep. and um yeah it was just i mean for me it was one of the one of the greatest learning experiences to date so um Okay, but back to your question. You just asked what motivated me to go, and it was kind of like um, it would have taken more effort to not go. Like, that's how it felt. Like, it was just like, okay, like, just just don't stop this. Just don't interrupt this. But it was also a place you'd never been to before, right? Yeah, never been to Egypt. There was all kinds of sort of bad publicity about Egypt, just going on you know, yeah, government right. websites. You know, and then there's even just like our own, like as as Westerners, like our own stereotypes about like the Middle East and, um, you know, how they treat women over there and how and that motivated me even more for sure. Like that was like definitely going to go there then. Like definitely like that's a real expect nothing experience. Like you can't you can't prepare for that. You can't know what to expect. If even your own government website is saying we recommend you don't. It's like, okay, like, this is really going to be, <laughs> yeah, there's no way to, there's no way to be ready for that. So how did you find the culture and the place compared to, like, some of the negative stereotypes in America? Like, oh, this is a place of terrorism and terrorists and women are treated, however, you know, mistreated. And, like, how did you find mm -hmm. things there? Um, first of all, I just, I loved it. So there's, I mean, you, there's kind of something before I even talk about any of the like specifics, like the cultural specifics, there's, you can kind of like step into a room or step into a city or, and just kind of feel something. And getting to Egypt was like, whoa, I love it here. 
I love something about it here. So that was like the first impression was just like strong. Yes. I love this. Um, and then culturally, like, honestly, like, it's hard to say, like, um, I remember you telling me something that, like, people might find surprising, but I totally got it when you said it. You're like, when I talked, when you came back from Egypt, you're like, there's so much freedom there. Totally. I, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, compared to America, there's a way where it's actually more free than America, but people, of course, in America, have, they think they're in the freest place. Oh, my God. Which they're a little bit cooler. Totally. That's, like, on a few different levels. Like... <laughs> Like the, so in the States, like I was kind of talking about before, like this comfort that we've like designed for ourselves or this, like this, um, this bureaucracy, this, just like the way things are in the States is so much more rigid and in Egypt. So that for sure, like in, when I, just being in Egypt feels like anything is possible. That's one of the, it's just like, whoa, it's like, okay, hard to explain this, but see if you can, it's like usually like in the States, there's this like bubble around me of like, this is how far I can go. In Egypt, it's just like so far, so much further out. It's like, even if there's like, it is, you are aware that like, just being a Westerner, you're, you're like, you're drawing people's attention. Like you're different. You're, you're more sort of like, there's like heightened awareness around you. And still there's like this, culture that just permeates of like whatever you want to get done whatever vision you have to create like it can get created like people are down to just do stuff like people are down like if there's something like somebody has like okay I want like my friend Amar who's help who's leading these trips with me in uh the end of this year like he'll just have these like wild ideas like stuff that is just like how that's not nobody that doesn't serve like nobody is gonna even know how to make that happen nobody has ever done that before like like getting an entire town to collaborate on like one initiative or like or just like like he has this thing in Dahab where he lives where like all the little kids that like just live there and like they all know him and they all come up to him and they all like go and like uh like not just the kids too, like, but he can get, he'll get like food delivered out to a boat when we're all out on a boat, like having a picnic and he'll get food brought out to the boat yeah. from a, so it's just like all kinds of stuff that like, if you want it done in Egypt, it can get done. That's what feels so cool. So like taking people back out there, one of the hardest things right now is for me, like, I almost like I can't get creative enough. Like I can't dream big enough like I need help thinking of like what cool stuff could would be awesome because it can get done like it could it, we can make it happen we can create these just like incredible experiences for people and right now I feel like almost limited by my own creativity which is cool like that's not mm. often I don't feel that usually mm. my reflection on like I haven't been to Egypt yet but my what I resonate with what you're sharing was when I was in South India and I was like, oh my God, this is like the freest place I've ever been, right? Because wow. in America, we're at we're a time now where there's so many laws, there's so many lawyers, there's so much bureaucracy, there's so many, like everything has this regimentation, so regimented, you know, where India, South India was like lawless. There was like, you didn't, you never saw a police officer anywhere. The streets, I was thinking of that U2 that song, where the streets have no name, you know, and I think the song to me is like, really like a metaphor for like enlightenment, like transcending the mind, like where the streets have no name, you know. But I was in South India, and I'm like, whoa, the streets here literally have no name. Like, you can't even tell somewhere, they go like, go down to the statue, and take a right, and go a little ways, and then you'll see the temple, and go to the left. <laughs> and then there's, you know, Sanjay's house, he's over there, underneath this thing, and over there. So everything is like this beautiful chaos. You know, it's 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 not organized. It's totally it's the opposite of organized. It's totally unorganized. But in this like complete disorganization, there's like this infinite potentiality. You know, and so I was just really like appreciating this like 
what people people don't realize that though they think that it's, it's, freedom is such a fascinating thing. Like, what is freedom, and how do you get it? How do you not get it? I mean, first of all, it's in us. Like we are free in itself. We're just limiting ourselves. Like, like you said, you know. So it's almost like being part that just removes um, or allows us to see more clearly where we're limiting our own freedom. But why? Why do we limit our freedom? For exactly the things that you said. For security. For safety. So people, you know, all this stuff. Which, which has its place, but there's a balance, right? There's a balance between security and insecurity. If it's too much, too much security, you feel like getting, you feel bold, you feel like lifeless, you know? And too much insecurity, there's an imbalance of, of, of you know, there's an anxiety about totally. being able to create anything. So there's some level of security, there's some level of safety, but we've gone like way too far with it. And it's, you know, it's opening up to this greater level of insecurity and greater level of unknown, embracing the unknown. I mean, I think that's a huge thing that I see you doing is you're embracing the unknown. So, like, I've never been to Egypt. I don't know much about it. Let me see what happens, right? Like, embrace the unknown seems like a big part of what you're doing. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. I really like that. I like just you coming back to, like, how it comes to freedom. Like, how that's really the, that's, like, the direct experience that all of this is, is that's the point of all of this. So, yeah, and you're right that, like, some security is so key, too. Like, I can't, I don't mean to mm -hmm. totally disregard insecurity at yeah. all um and yeah what you're making me realize too is that for some of these like when i think about even just partnering with you on one of these for some of these like trips now in peru last time in egypt yeah there's for me there's like uh um there's like a, an anxiety or like a fuck, like there's a million options like i could do anything so I do nothing or so I do, it's like this this um like deer in headlights or almost just like this anxiety pause that happens from too much insecurity or for too many options too much too much potential yeah so and that that actually I feel currently like I feel that here right now we have like three days left with the girls the there's five of us in Peru right now <clears throat> And there's kind of like, we've had a, we just had like an epic five day hike, like a hundred kilometers up to Machu Picchu. And it was amazing. Um, and then we came back and we did some workshops, um, you know, some really deep, like intentional work. And then now we've just got some more time. We've got some stuff planned. And I just feel this like, like, uh, yeah, like I, I don't know. Like, I don't really know what to do with the rest of this time right now. And like, it would be nice to have some, some security or some like clarity about just like this. Well, this is, you know, this is what we're going to do. Or, or even just to have um, mm -hmm. a framework or something, some sort of structure, something mm -hmm. that contains this. Cause right now it's like, I yeah. don't know where anyone is. Like I'm in a cafe doing this podcast. Everyone is just doing something. And, um, uh -huh. and yeah, like, I think there's a better possibility here. Like this, to me, somehow this feels like a freedom clamp. Like it's not full. It's not the best case scenario. It's not, it could be better for sure. It's like, people are kind of like, huh, I guess I'll go for a walk and see where I end up. Or, you know, just like, <laughs> like there's definitely. Well, I think what you're saying is, is, I think what you're saying is really interesting. I want to, I want to touch on it in a moment. I also want to say hi to Lily, who I believe is in Peru, right, Lily? I think Lily's watching us from Peru. What city in Peru are you in, Lily? And I also want to say hi to Peter James, who's been suffering from a serious illness. I want to give him our love. And is Pete on the call? Healing wishes. You know Peter. I love Pete. Yep. Yeah. He's here. So what you're saying that I find, like, really interesting is a certain amount of structure actually creates freedom. It's really fascinating. I, I, and I've been like learning this more like recently, you know, so it's like, it's almost like, like a game needs rules. Yes. If there's, if nice. there's no rules, there's no fun because it's not a game, you know, but then the rules can always evolve and change. Right. So it's like, I don't know what we're going to do the next three days. To me, that's really exciting. 
Like, I don't know what I'm going to do today. I, I really like being in that space, but then I like to be able to create what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. Right? So if I'm constantly in a space of like, I don't know, I'm confused, there's so many options, there's so many, like, then I'm just kind of like spinning around, you know, I'm not empowered. Totally. But if I'm like, there's so many options, and this is what I'm going to do. And I'm positive, confident, and clear I'm doing this one, you know? Oh, now there's so many options again, and I'm doing this one, you know? There's so many options. It's almost like leaving from that place. It's like almost like a heartbeat. It's like open, close, open, close, you know? Hmm. It's like infinite choice, and then no choice. Infinite choice, and then no choice. Infinite choice, and then no choice. But if you get caught That's in cool. one, you know, you're, you're, you're stuck, right? If it's like... There's no choice. Well, that's that's obviously not freeing. But if there's like infinite choice, then it's also not freeing because you never have a chance to actually move into anything. You know, so it's like this balance of like having a clear sense of direction, but continually being open to redirect, right? To to have it evolve and change. You know? So I find with my retreats, like I'll give people an agenda because they really want one. So I just like I give them one. And I'm like, listen, this is going to probably most likely, almost certainly change. Like, as we go forward, like, like many, probably multiple times as new information arises, that the truth presents itself in different moments. And if I would just try to stick with this rigid plan, even though it's not alive, you know, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be an alive retreat for people to experience or alive, you know, um, mm-hmm. whatever it is, class or session, whatever. Um, so that, that openness, but also a sense of like, we are going a certain direction, but we're totally open to like how that moves and how that evolves and how that goes. So it's like, again, I, I find balance is huge. Like balance for me is what I always come back to. Of like balance, like all these things have their place, but like finding the balance between them. And then like, what's the like, like when you just said like we have a direction, that to me is the key. Like if you know the like where you're going, then all that stuff can just be like, yeah, the back and forth of getting there, like the winding road that gets you there. And then you can chill and just know that there's going to be ups and downs. But when you don't know where you're even going, um, which is kind of what I feel sometimes with this, it's like I've got a bigger vision like for the world or for like life or for reaching potential and being able to share that. But for just being in Peru, it's like, I don't know, like this, like this is like reaching your potential is like such a long term game. And yeah, so when I think about like what is the like North Star of leading this trip here and making as making as big of a difference is what is it exactly you know it's like so i don't i'm not super clear on like what my what the winding path is i going toward like because then Mm -hmm. every like infinite every time there's like infinite choice and then you like narrow it in on okay we're gonna do this that would be guided by something like there would be a reason that you choose Mm -hmm. that one and right Mm -hmm. now it's kind of like just the most fun thing or or the most intentional thing or the you know it's like um yeah it's kind of like for me i think it's like what am i what's my criteria for success on this and i'm real yeah so right now I'm feeling this kind of like uh, like infinite options like groundlessness it's like okay so now's my chance to like choose the next thing because it's been a great trip like i know these girls are gonna go back and be like it was epic like it was so wonderful like <laughs> had such an awesome like inner growth uh, you know met cool people did this epic trip and there's three days left and i feel responsible and so like what's the next thing or like how do we rein those three days in or just like yeah i don't want it just to be like a fizzle out so i think it's like my what i'm always interested is like what is like people come to retreat why are you here like what's your intention what what's the reason that you're here and a lot of times with me because of who i am you'll say things like i just want to be i just want to be in the moment and i'm i'm kind of a point where like that's great you know and what, why why are you here you know? like like what are we what are we going to create together what do we want to create together you know it's like the sense of like um co-creative empowerment right so the 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 intentional the sense of like living with intention and consciousness has to come back to like the why right so i'm i'm curious like 
what is it why why did they come there what do they want do they want to just experience like a different culture that's an awesome reason you know and then you can do more things that experience the culture do they want to like discover like a deeper sense of like freedom you know so they want to discover more like their life purpose like it might be a good time to check in like like what, what's happening what's alive like you know how do we want to share these? especially if it's a That's small cool. group like that i'm gonna write this down yeah um i like what robin just said too yeah exactly what you said maybe just have a powwow with everyone and you'll get it and actually you said something else brian about like what are we creating together and okay the thing that has been just like the yeah. clear like the brightest intentional work that we've done is i've led a write i've led this writing workshop and it was like okay like it's just there's such like strong gravity to that like people like we want to be writing this whole group wants to be producing content so the idea of bringing people together to now because what it feels like is like we've all gotten this like awesome experience like we've like sucked it in we've like consumed it and now what like now what with it like now just so to create How you gonna take it right, forward? exactly like now like now what about sharing what you've gained like yeah. and i think a lot of people don't have they don't know how and like i'm mm -hmm. lucky or glad that i started my blog because now i know that every time i learn a lesson i can share it and it's there's something so fulfilling mm -hmm. about that so this idea i'm just getting so excited <laughs> this idea about i think i think that that's it it's like the question now for the group is what lessons have you learned and how do you carry it forward and one of the things that I've learned, like in the treats that I do, is people are like, you know, when I go back, I'm going to do this. When I go back. And what I started to realize and what I'm like very adamant about is like, no, you're not going back. There's no going back. You're only going forward. Clutch. I you're love that. <laughs> you're not the same person you were when you got here. Like you're a different person now. So if you try to go back and fit in, to where you were before, you're going to be miserable because it's not going to work. But if you realize I'm different, I'm in a different space, I'm going forward to create something new, you know? It may be in the same place I lived before. It may be in the same with the same husband or wife or kids or girlfriend, boyfriend. It may be the same job. It may not be. But I'm going, like, forward from where I, from where I came. Like, I'm not the same person I entered here that I am leaving. You know, and like really getting into that and getting like, you know, clarity around that and like starting to like kind of feel into what are the lessons that I've learned here that have transformed me and evolved me to go forward from this place together, you know? Mm, and like this is just the good. people that I've shared this journey with, the people I've shared this experience with, like I will always have a bond with them because we shared this together, you know, and we learn and grew through each other's reflection. I just love this so much <laughs> okay so this um you're almost helping me reframe like the entire point of doing these trips um because yeah so far i haven't really known it's just been like come with me i learned stuff every time i do one so like let's go do this and yeah, yeah. now just to have this this new framework about produce content like the point is to like go experiment to jump off into some sort of like unknown territory learn together with me we're all mm -hmm. going to be learning with whoever else is is involved and then we're going to produce content like that's actually part of these is like you're sharing what you've gained like that's and like this is something that like lights me up more than anything is to is to like facilitate these content production workshops or sprints like this is um i could just only do that instead of all this other stuff related to leading trips i could just only do that um, and then it's like, there's a reason for people to come on these finally, instead of just go and see what cool thing I get. It's like, let's go learn how to produce content. Let's go have like really intensified, like condensed learning experiences and learn how to write about it, learn how to share it or learn how to speak about it, learn how to, how to give what I just got. Like, I love this so much because that's I love a too. way bigger I love too. purpose. Yeah, it can almost be like a requirement of like, when you leave here, there's a blog that you share what lessons you learn. And or, I can uh, produce it or, or I mean, I've got partners yeah. with big with huge networks that they they're waiting for content for me to um, 
for me to give them content so that they can post out to their networks. And I kind of haven't been able to figure out like, where do I get this like stream of content, like continuous content? I can write something every week or something, but if I've got a group of people that I'm traveling with and they're producing content, there's already people ready to share it. Like there's already networks ready to. So it's just, this is such a great piece of the puzzle. I'm so grateful. Thank you. Yeah. It always happens. Thank I'm you. always so stoked with our conversations. I love that this one was the one that was the podcast. Yeah, that everyone can be a part of and listen to and get their own like epiphanies. And most of the people listen afterwards, you know, they, a lot of people listen live, a lot of people, more people listen after. So this, this will be all, this will go on and on. And it's, in it's uh, light bulb moments for everybody. And what's beautiful, you know, about you again, is like, you think you're so authentic and vulnerable in what's open to you. It allows everyone else to have that in an experiential way as well. So... I just want to acknowledge that in you and reflect that back to you. Because it takes, it takes courage. It takes courage. So I think that's the biggest thing that I see is like just courage. Courage to step out, you know, known and share what's alive and what's real. So thank you. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask you yeah a couple things so i think my computer is going to die so i just want to read a couple things that i i like from your last blog um, <laughs> back to the the texas of egypt you were talking about like uh the bedouin and watching them pray so watching them pray a brood assumption i had about religion my belief was that muslims were lost in the religion part of spirituality the dogma and the judgment and the rule that they were more radical and therefore less concerned to the universal source that is independent from religion but watching them pray seeing that their connection was real made me realize how alike we all are in spirituality their prayer is my meditation is an atheist intuition their connection to Allah is my connection to source and a Christian's connection to God. I had a bias that tricky relations and belief systems necessarily correlated with a weaker source. What I learned was that someone's connection to source is not determined by how they got there. That's really good. I really like that. Hold that. One more thing before the computer does. This is this relates to adaptability. I like this lesson of, uh, because it contradicts a bias I tend to have about us humans that we're slow learners. I also kind of think that way. Stuck in our ways, and many of us can't change. On the contrary, what I've learned is we're instant learners with a strong capacity to adapt when placed in environments that require adaption. I love it. Could you please speak to either of those points or both? <laughs> I just liked that article more than I ever liked it before, just hearing you read it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Um, um, God. Well, okay, the prayer. That was the, that was the, that was huge for me. There was actually one experience after the camel trip, not related to the Bedouins, but when I, I went back to Egypt to collaborate with my friend Amar, and he brought me around to, like, his hometown all over, but in his hometown, I met this this um, mentor of his who had been a mentor growing up. And this guy is like uh, the equivalent of a Bible thumper, but a Muslim. And he, um, you know, it's like we're at his like workshop, this like, it's nighttime, we're out on the streets, there's people around and he meets me and, and like neither of us speak, he doesn't speak English, I don't speak Arabic. But he just kind of connects with me, um, gives me, brings out these beads, puts them in my hand and starts saying these prayers and ask, and kind of like waiting for me to repeat. And at first, you know, and so I was kind of repeating, just like doing the thing, like just being nice and kind of just like, okay, this guy wants me to repeat prayers in front of an audience. Um, and then it like, you know, and at first that was my, my original bias was like operational. It was like, this guy's caught up in the religion thing. Like he just wants to like share his religion. So let's just have an experience. Let's see, let's see what, let's see how this goes. And then as I'm like doing the prayers with him and like moving the beads and he's like doing it and he's like getting slower and deeper and clearer. 
and the people more and more people are kind of gathering around and then we all just kind of sink into this like who and it was just like holy shit like that's how i feel when i meditate deeply like we're all sharing this right now like this connection to source is here right now and we all feel it and then right then you know uh amar's brother is like whoa i he's like what is that and um the guy who's like doing this with the beads is like ah there you go now there finally it was this, just like this this shared meditative experience and it was for me just like god like yeah how many times do i need to like have my judgment about spirituality or religion challenged it's like no we're all it's all the same source we're all just doing it in all these different ways and if we could just like shut up about our differences on this and like just even me like i feel like i'm one of the most open-minded people ever and even me i'm going into this like this guy with his like religious you know instead of just like probably he's connected to source and probably he's sharing me his way and i probably i have something to learn and that's you know that's to me just like the, just such a key lesson, almost the most important lesson is like nobody's way is better than anybody else's way. It's all the same source. What language, what culture, I mean, how they got there, what, they're, what words they're saying. If it's a group, if it's a church, if it's your grandpa, like it's the same one. And also like the way isn't really even that important. It's like the, what's behind the way. You know, like, if you get past the way, that's what I think like, last time you put in the thing, was like, if you get past the way, what's behind the way is just the absolute truth. Because you know, that's all there ever is in any moment. And so that's all anyone's ever trying to either get at or avoid or whatever, but it's all pointing at the same absolute truth. And there's so many different modalities, so many different ways of expressing that or looking into that or exploring that and yeah it's beautiful really that. and then the point that you made about adaptability i think is really, really powerful too it's like we, we become like it's difficult for us to adapt and to evolve and to change and to grow because we've created an environment around what nice Safety. Security. So, because those, that becomes our priority, that's what society essentially is based on. You know, society is trying to face a lot. People being safe, people feeling secure, people being comfortable. But people also feel dead. They feel like they're dying inside, you know? So it's like there's got to be more emphasis on um, aliveness, passion, inspiration, you know? Um, and then... If you put people in situations where they're required to adapt, then you can bring that out more. You can bring an aliveness. Oh, because totally. I, I, from my perception, and from, I think from you, we feel as human beings, we feel most alive when we're learning and growing and evolving. That's when we feel most alive. And, and I'd add one more thing. This, this relates to your adventure right now. When we can share that with others. Yeah, key. That's when it's like the full, the full spectrum. You know? Because otherwise, it's the kind of thing of like, it's not complete. But it's like, and I'm giving this to you. I'm sharing this with you. Then it's like, you feel the most alive. You know? Um, so just to realize that, it's like a lot of in our culture, it's like we go to school for 12 years and then, okay, I, I learned everything. It's like, no, you haven't even begun. Yeah. It's like, it's like, you know, we're learning and growing every day. Life is here. Life is a teacher, you know? So I think recognizing that, it like, it, it just creates this other level of inspiration and passion and aliveness to bring to life. Totally. I've seen that so clear here. <clears throat> Or just, or with traveling, I should just say with traveling, is this, this, um, it's so, like, you can just, you become so aware of the stuff that was, like, um, like, your conditioning or your built-in or your personality or, like, this is how I am. You, that stuff just, when it doesn't compute in an environment anymore, it's so obvious and, and like, uncomfortable and just sticky, like, just even sleeping in or, like, um, even just, I don't know if you have this, but this is something that uh, I know a lot of people have. I have this. It's this, um, like, 
you got to be so ready before you leave the house. Like you got to know where you're going. You have to have every. You have to just like like your life has like all the stars have to be aligned before you walk out of your front door. And I've just noticed that like um, not just with me but with people that I brought traveling with me. There's like, uh, okay, where am I going? Where's the first place that I'm going? Do I have my map? Is my phone? Do I have my charger? Is my phone fully charged? Am I like, who am I meeting? Then where and where are we meeting? Just having everything need to make sense before you can like, and what's been so cool for me is to just be like, no, go ahead anyways. Like, nope. Okay. Just like meet me now. Hurry here, right here. And just to see people like exit, walk out and then find themselves like, oh, I can like just, I can get lost and get found again. Like I can, you can just, you can leave without being ready. You can do stuff without being ready. You don't have to have security to go. Yeah, wait, so where was I going with that? Yeah, just yeah. the aliveness, the aliveness of like letting go of the, the, the rigidity of the plan and like, you know, being open to what's, what's here and now. I totally resonate. Oh, but the adaptability that, okay. So that when people are in an environment where they have to adapt. So, so what I've noticed is that people will use, it's like every last resource, every last thing that they can to just like not have to adapt, like not have like, like to sort of like buffer this environment so that they can still just stay their same way. But finally, like when they cross the threshold of like, all right, fuck it like that that way doesn't work like i'm gonna have to adapt it's instant it's immediate like people already people are so resilient so so such quick learners so available like it's just this it's just that like getting to that point where finally it's like yes like now i'm committed now i'm into this next world like i'm into the environment where a new me is required but until then there is so much resistance so much like like so even just like leaving the house to get ready it's like there's people will look for so many like so many excuses to just be like i'm just actually tired i'm just gonna uh my i still need to wait for my phone to charge um oh no i'm actually just gonna um i'm gonna re like study this map of the area so that when i am ready to go out like i know everywhere that i'm going or whatever like there's all these ways of just sort of like not crossing that threshold and becoming a and and forcing yourself to adapt so that's interesting. That, I mean, but it's so cool to just think about how to like, how to make it easier and less threatening to cross that threshold for people. Just if, just in leading trips. Yeah. Yeah. It's an awesome question. Yeah. I fully totally love it. Um, if anybody has any questions or comments for Corey or myself, you may share in the comments. Uh, Corey is at CoreyKatuna.com. You can Check out the, the link below and uh, tune into her blog and all the things she's exploring and doing and that we'll be co-creating together in the future. Robin says the movie Accidental Tourist is all about the planning thing, like trying to travel in a protected way. And I imagine by the title, it doesn't quite work out that way. And people probably learn all sorts of beautiful things <laughs> in the process. I want to ask you about free diving. Mm. tell me about free diving like you've journeyed into this and like what that's like for you and what lessons you've learned from that and also i'm i'm fascinated by the breath so um just i can talk a lot about the breath but just, just succinctly i think like so much of how we move to this 3d world is based upon our breath hmm. and how we're and how we're breathing or good not point breathing, i agree right? present lack of presence consciousness unconscious whether we're relaxed or anxious it's all in the breath, you know, in a very practical way. And I was reading something about how you were holding your breath for like over three minutes. Over four. And I was like, that's amazing. I want to like learn about, learn about that and how you did that. Because I've, nice. been, I've been doing practices and breath work, holding my breath. And I'm not anywhere near that, that place of like three minutes yet. So I'm, I want to hear about free diving and the breath and the lessons that arise from that place for you. So many lessons. This is one of the most like lesson saturated experiences of my life. I for feel sure. that. Um, okay, but since you said your computer is going to die, let me just, I'm going to like wrap, do them in one. Like there was something associated yeah. with the breath and one of the key lessons. Mm. Um, so, so this is just about the difference between uh, knowing and thinking, like having something that you just like can count on 
that's already there. It's like integrated versus all the stuff you want, all the feelings, thinking I want this, I feel like this, I'm uncomfortable, blah, 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 blah. Like all that chatter. So free diving made a, an enormous distinction between those for me. Are you still there? Your face is... Are you still... Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Still there? I'm here. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Are you there? I'm right here. Yep. I'm right here. Let me let me type in that I'm here. Oh, now I can't type. Yes, I can't type it in. I'm here. There. So yeah, you're frozen, but I think you'll come back. Are you back? Are you here? Say something amazing right now. I'm amazing like totally... right now. Yes, there they are. There you are. I knew it would happen if I said that. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay, cool. So, so this distinction between all the chatter, all the wants, all the, all the like, just preferences and feelings and thoughts and all this versus just what you know and what is to be done, basically, just like what is true. So, <clears throat> we spent the first half of the course learning about the physiology of the body and that that actually that we have a ton of oxygen available to us way more than we ever feel like when we're holding our breath so when we're holding our breath and we get that impulse like i need to breathe these contractions in our gut and this um you know just this like panicky feeling about needing to breathe it's not associated with oxygen that's associated with a buildup of co2 which is just saying like i'm over this i'm over this please breathe but it, it doesn't mean that we're low on oxygen. Like they actually proved this and showed us that we had like 96% ox oxygen concentration after like over a minute breath hold. So we're good on oxygen when we're holding our breath. We're going to be fine. We can, I mean, one of the instructors got up to like nine minutes. <clears throat> the thing that we're practicing is just wow. CO2 tolerance. That's all breath hold practices. And most of us just have nonsense CO2 tolerance. And um, so, and also um, panic or like um, using any energy reduces oxygen and increases CO2. So if you're underwater and you start feeling like I need to breathe and no, I really need to breathe. And now this is scary. You're now it just like expedites the process. And like, so it's, you know, bad news. But if you can just remember that you're actually fine on oxygen, like, like maybe nine minutes fine on oxygen, and all you have, like, and just to ignore every single thing in your body that's saying, like, I want to breathe, I want to breathe, I want to breathe. Every thought that's saying, I'm scared, I'm scared, this sucks. Every, like, every chatter thing that is distracting you from the fact that you know that you're fine. Like, just the more you can just um, remember what you know and disregard what you know is just chatter on the top the more you can hold your breath, the calmer you are, the, like, the, more, the, less of a, the less of a sort of downward spiral it is. So it's this like, yeah, it's just, it's like boot camp for meditation. Free diving. It's meditation. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what I was discovering is like, exactly what you're saying is I'm discovering why I'm fascinated by it. It's like, if I'm like, oh no, can I hold my breath? Then I'm not gonna be able to hold my breath, right? The, anx the anxiousness makes it, makes it become reality. But if there's a sense of relaxing into the moment, then you can relax deeper exactly. more and more. So it's like it's such a it's such a great like like uh, exercise for life for like living. You got it. That's exactly it. <laughs> That's how it feels. It was like this is like this is one of the best like symbols for living well in one sport in one package that I've ever seen. It's just it's saturated. Yeah, it's high. What stakes. about the diving part? Um. So that's just the breath part. Let's see the diving part. There's, I mean, the diving part is pretty mechanical. It's pretty like, I mean, the thing is that the depth just being, I mean, my max was 27 meters. So like 88 feet deep underwater. It's just high stakes. It's like, it's like a hundred percent high stakes, life or death high stakes. So, so that's why I say it's meditation boot camp. It's like, yeah, yeah, you could, it's like you don't really have a choice. <laughs> Meditation and you could die. Yeah. Meditate or die. <laughs> yeah. Meditate or die. That's awesome. I agree. I really, yeah. that's, that's inspiring. 
And it's like a metaphor for, to me, it's like plunging into the unknown. It's like, right. Except this is an environment where you have to adapt. You don't get to, you don't get to use any of your, any of your like tried and true methods for like postponing discomfort or just like maintaining your safe. No, it's like (laughs) you do it or it's over. Like, I mean, and off, mm-hmm. also you're with instructors who are completely compassionate and competent and you're out there with other people and it's, mm-hmm. it's, it feels very safe. But many times I was just like, I don't want to, like, I don't want to, my brain is too fast. Like my heart is beating. Like I can't calm down. And it's just like, you're, you have to, you, it's like, you just laying there and you just have mm-hmm. to. Yeah. It's so cool. It's just so cool to have a hundred percent of my energy focused on the stuff that I wish I w- could be focused on the 99% of the rest of my life. You know, it's like, I wish I had these high stakes to be managing my energy, managing my vibration. Like, you know, yeah. It's like the high stakes bring your faculties like totally exactly. to the moment. Right? Yeah. Like, you're not thinking about, oh, you know, last year this happened or like, you know, what ha- what will happen next week? It's like, you're totally engaged. Yeah. There's no excuses. Yeah. You can't, you can't bullshit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think about this movie. You ever see this movie Fight Club? Yeah. So way, way back when it was like in the theater, I was invited to go. And I'm like, ah, some dumb action movie. I don't feel like going, but like, you know, I'll just go to sit through it, you know? So then the movie starts and like five minutes in, I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, this movie's about enlightenment. And I couldn't believe it. Like this, this mainstream movie was like about enlightenment, and like that's that's what I was so devoted to at the time. So it was like such an amazing movie for me. And what was amazing about it was, again, like you can use any modality to 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 awaken, right? So these guys are using fighting, nice because it's the same thing. Fighting. What's what's more high stakes if I'm going to punch you in your face, right? So it's like it brings you <laughs> totally in the moment. Not that I, I, I will say I haven't been a part of a fight club, but I know from high stick experiences that it brings you like totally in the moment, right? So whether it's free diving or fighting or these things that aren't considered like spiritual are actually like the most spiritual because it brings nice. you like totally, I totally in the point. moment. So, so there's a second point though. Then the question is, Oops, it's can you be in that space? Oh, can you hear me? I got too excited, maybe. Hello? 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 Can you hear me? Can everybody else hear me? I'm just going to, like, say this point, and then I can say it again when, you, when you're back and you can hear me. But the second point is, can you be... Are you here? The second point is, can you be in the moment, fully, wholly engaged in the moment when the stakes are not high? That's the second question. Everybody hear that out there? Did you hear that, Corey? You there, Corey? I'm just going to say hi to Corey on here. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. No? Oh, good. So I was saying the, the second point is, which is the really, the really like critical point, can you then take that experience or that realization that experience and be fully, wholly, completely in the moment when the stakes are not high, right? There you That's go. the next level. Yeah. So can you be holy? There you go. That's been the biggest. <clears throat> nice. So yeah, I've been, we've been ahead. texting a little bit and you've heard me say this a few times. This has been just all over my mind is like, I'm trying to impose that. Like I'm trying to figure out how to hack this and like make it so, mm-hmm. so, and the best one that I've heard so far was this, um, what if you had a year to live? or six months to live or three years to live or something like this. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, it takes some time to like actually feel that and have that influence your behavior. Yeah. But, um, yeah. and, but really what I want is to, yeah, that's my, that feels like, that feels like that would be the sort of most effective high stakes hack would be like, what if like I didn't, mm. oh, shit, can you hear me? 
Let's dive into that a little bit. Um, Come on. I um, just have a few minutes left, but there's something interesting about Man, that. It is sloppy service here. I, I wonder if if that really brings you fully into the moment or if that has you sort of thinking about the future. Like, what if I had a year to live? There's only one year to live. I have 364 days. Now I have 363. Now I have 362. And it creates a certain kind of pressure. Or, because remember we talked about if you're free diving, like, you have to be relaxed. Right? So, just kind of feeling into if that space, if that exercise, does it create a, a, a stress, a pressure that takes me out of the moment? Or am I relaxed? Hmm. And that, that allows me to be fully in the moment and fully like available and open to being here. That's my inquiry with that. I don't know if I don't even know if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Nice. Can you hear me right now? Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Yeah. So just exploring that. I think it's like all these things are just Shoot. like what do they bring out? What kind of what kind of energies are they? I can hear you. Can you hear me? I hear you, yep. We're here. We're present. So Hello? I love this. I love what you're saying. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Let me read what Robin says. Damn. Robin thinks I I think that nowadays there are so many distractions with our cell phones bleeping and buzzing, etc. It takes even more discipline to focus. I notice it's accomplish a thing I noticed it in myself too that's really interesting thank you for that Robin I think that that's it's like how do we navigate the modern technology is an interesting question that we can definitely explore more as we go and having spaces that are free of that totally and completely I think can open up valuable spaces inside ourselves and bring in valuable things into awareness inside ourselves for sure We're going one more time. Before we part ways. And uh, really grateful for everybody for being here, for sharing the spaces. I love this series. I love what we're sharing. I love what we're doing. I love what's these conversations. I love the response. I love um, what um, sparks in people. I love the, 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 the people, the, the, the guests that are suggested by people to join us. I really loved having Corey. I really love the authenticity of this conversation, the aliveness, the energy, the, um, in the vulnerability that she shares, in this authentic vulnerability that she shares, there's an experiential sense of it beyond just an intellectual academic sense of it that I really appreciate. And uh, say goodbye, but I think I might need to do it on both of our behalfs because we're having a little trouble getting her back on. But um, yeah, just gratitude, gratitude and appreciation for sharing this journey together, for being with me on Tuesdays. On Wednesdays, we have the Secret Glow, which is my um, online private group where we dive in more deeper, which will be tomorrow. So you can you can get that through my website, thebigglow.com slash online to join us there. There's a 28-day there's a free trial where we're just accessing all these different aspects of our life, um, mind, body, spirit, um, community, family, relationships, work, spirit. Um, it's all the primary areas of our life, you know, and just supporting each other and actualizing. We've got some retreats coming up. You can check the links at the bottom to see what's happening below. And i um, really excited about what Corey and I are going to create together. So really happy we had a chance to connect today and share today. And she's in Peru for a few more days, finishing up her, her journey. And... Um, She'll be back in hometown of Boulder, Colorado in a few days. So
for the rest of your day. And see you next week.